from the council group we have, I can tell that a lot of the councillors, they're absolutely petrified. You know, the negative side to it, you know, the media has been so negative that they are driving them, you know, people are absolutely living in fear. They all seem to think they're going to die with it. And this is a big concern I have. That the, the national media is nothing. You know, the BBC, when you look at the, the, the website, I don't watch the news, but I look at it on the iPad on the one, and everyone is negative. Every, virtually every story they come up with, and it's just building more fear. You know, they go on about the deaths every day, and they are tragedy. I don't, I'm not trying to belittle the people that's died, but there's a lot of people die every day in the country anyway. Yes, we've had excess deaths, but they don't talk about how many people's discharged from hospital every day, how many people are getting over it. And that is never mentioned. And it just seems to me they are trying to breed fear, you know, instill fear into everybody. And I have a great concern for how people will socially trust each other in the future. But certainly a big section of the population will be frightened to go out and socialise with anybody. They're living in complete fear and we need to do something because that fear in itself will kill people. They become so sort of thing, uh, despondent and that will have a very negative impact on people's health. We have a problem. We need to get herd immunity, really. Vaccines do not, do not work to the extent that they're being portrayed. Why do we keep getting told and stressed to us about the new normal? Why is it, if we're going to get over this disease, what's the new normal got to do with it? I'm feeling the brainwashing us in to accepting a lot more control over our lives. And in Britain, that's supposed to be a free country. That's one thing that really concerns me. I think people don't realise they're going to have a lot of freedoms taken away from them. And, you know, for what reason? I just don't know. But it seems very strange to me. If, if the mainstream media wants to be challenging and supposedly uh, trying to find things out on the behalf of the public, they should be doing a lot of this. And there doesn't seem any will there at all. It's all about the new, um, the new normal, the new normal. Uh, you know, the pubs, restaurants, cafes, hotel chain, a lot of people there are going to lose their jobs. Yes, some will get going in a smaller way. There's going to be a massive bill to pay, to, to, you know, through taxation. Some it can only be paid through taxation in some way or another to pay the bill for this. And that is going to fall. I mean, I'm 62. Yes, I will still get some. But if you look at the 30-year-olds with young children coming on, the people got 30 years to work, 40, they're the people that's going to end up paying that. You know, they're going to have to pay a big chunk of it. So it's going to have a drastic impact on their lives. Uh, the, the mainstream media just seems to echo it all the time. And every time they're trying to lift things and relax things now, the media is attacking them. So it's not safe, it's not safe. It's constantly, you know, they're not looking for any positives to try and get us out of it. The, the media just seems to be totally against us getting out of it in a way and sitting there with it. That's what, you know, it really frustrates me times there you know you start reading it and you feel like you could throw an hammer at the screen it's not because you know pent up frustration and other people I've talked to just think it's being over you know, over exaggerated ordinary people out there just want to get back on with their lives a lot of people do um, I know we live you know I live at Longridge and it's more rural area and we have space about these people we are space um, but it, and it must be a nightmare for the people in the big urban areas, the towns and the cities, and you know people living in blocks of flats and everything, and not being allowed to move. Yeah, I mean, I've just seen something today. There's two million people or something missed cancer appointments and stuff. So, th what will be the cost in lives of that alone? By people's fear of these two million, you know, if it was five percent, that's what ten thousand deaths you know, through delayed cancer treatment. 
we just do not know what what the cost you know the the cost in lives of that will be as far as children returning to school i cannot see a problem this the might it's there'll be a risk there's a risk in anything you know only them children might get injured through fighting and squabbles or frustration and family things because they're not out there that will have a negative effect there's nobody can say anything is 100 percent safe so uh, you never say it's 100 percent safe but i think the risk is so minuscule there'll be other greater risks through them not going to school than what there is keeping them off you know i understand that people might be serious problems and serious health concerns and they are worried about um you know the kids catching the disease from you know the virus from somebody else and bringing it home and i can understand that but there's probably as much chance if that bad from them going out to the supermarkets and you know getting shopping and getting you know it's going to come somewhere and eventually over the next couple of years we're all going to have to get the virus so the majority of us have to get up get it and get over it and build herd immunity that is the only way we're going we can't put it off forever and think it's going to go away but in reality the best cure from what these viruses like this is the sunshine and not weather so why have we been restricting people inside when probably outside and fresh air is the best thing you know i believe vitamin d from people saying vitamin d is a marvelous thing to help fight viruses people with high levels of vitamin d get over things easy it's not being mentioned the best way to get vitamin d is from sunshine on your body and we've been trying to keep people indoors i know we've released it now to let them outside but with the summer coming and all the good weather we don't want to be locking people up till then and then try to go out in the autumn when there's less sunshine people's vitamin d levels it will have a more harmful effect delaying that program till autumn and people if it comes back again in the winter so we'd be far better seeing a spike now in the summer to get people you know more people will get over it then you know this contact tracing and everything is this why they keep saying it's the new normal they want to log us everywhere we're going we're being tracked everywhere we're going and everything else and people collecting data on us because you know all you've heard for years about is data collection data collection um there was trouble in the election about the cambridge analytica all you know bear in mind you know your facebook this on zoom they'll all be being recorded they're collecting data on what people are saying you know all the facebook posts are monitored and i believe twitter and i'm not into social media never have been but uh you know all these posts are being monitored for what people are saying and if people are like trying to, if they don't like what you're saying basically cut down so again it is a erosion of freedom of speech we are slowly losing that freedom of speech you know people don't think we are they say what they want but it's all being controlled it's like big brothers watching you and even scientists have said you know challenges come out you know if you think what we're saying is wrong come and challenge us let's have an open debate and this open debate is not being brought forward there's no there's not been allowed for anybody else to put another side to it. it it's it's our vision and and that's it and you know the public there's always two sides to every argument and you know you've got to try and get both sides there to find the middle and get the, what is the real common ground if all you hear and all the public hear is one side and it's no wonder that's building a mass of fear among the people you know the ordinary public and especially the more people that do feel the more susceptible you know they're they're actually living in fear that can't be good i think if you look even at lancashire as a whole i think the deaths normally is it 360 deaths per hundred thousand population so that's 3.6 people in a thousand when you start looking like that although it's sad 
it's not the extreme that it's being portrayed, which the public tend to fear that. And I think that's one of the things we need to get out there. One of the things you think, you know, you've got declarations of interest and in everything we do. And, you know, even as parish councillors of what people are asked to declare, I'd like to know with these scientists advising the government, what their declarations of interests are. You know, and I believe the Gates Institute are funding a lot of these scientific uh, laboratories or whatever in this country. They're being funded by a vaccine manufacturer. This is where, you know, possibly mainstream media again could be challenging that. You know, them at that point saying, hang on, you know, if they really want to make a story up, they can, there's certain things they want to chase the story forever. And that is something there which I think they should be doing in the public interest to know whether these scientists are free or who they're being paid by. That must be a public interest thing. I think keep your chins up, you know, look forward and wherever you can, get out and get some sunshine, get into the fresh air, get there. Yes, you know, keep some distance between you, but I don't think we need to be paranoid, you know, freedom, you know, there will because the risk, yes, there's a risk but the risk is a lot less than what is being portrayed.